Good afternoon. I'm Priscilla Engel, Vice President of Customer Relations and Sales for Via Metropolitan Transit. Buenos tardes y bienvenidos. Soy Priscilla Engel, la Vice Presidenta de Servicio a Cliente y Ventas de Via Metropolitan Transit. Para todos quien prefieren participar en español, oprima Estrella Cero ahora para escuchar en español. Welcome to the virtual Via Trans Workshop. Thank you for joining us. We are excited to have a conversation with you over the next hour that allows us to speak with you directly and answer your questions and comments live on this call. We'll be discussing via online services for making and managing trips and reservations online, along with via trans subscription service. And you're gonna hear about exciting new technology for wayfinding and that project is called Neverlands, and you'll be hearing more about that later in this hour. <clears throat> Throughout the workshop, we'll be bringing in callers live, answering questions submitted through the streaming player interface and asking you for your opinion on a few survey questions. So we hope that you'll be responding to those questions when they pop up during the hour. As I mentioned, this is an interactive forum and we want to hear from you. We will be taking as many questions as we can as we can during the hour and those questions will be coming into us live. Recuerden que pueden oprimar Estrella Cero ahora para escuchar en español. If you have any questions, you can press star three on the phone, the phone keypad at any time and you will be placed in line to speak with a member of our staff. What, after that time, once your name is called, you will be live on the call and you will be able to, we will, we will be able to answer your questions directly. If you're streaming the event on our website, you can simply type your name and question below the stream, the streaming player. This via trans, this via trans workshop is also being streamed live on our website at viainfonet slash workshop and on Facebook Live. I'm honored to be your host this afternoon to host this conversation with our outstanding panel of guests that we have with us today. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce them to you. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Bob Como, who is a member of the VIA Board of Trustees and chair of the Accessible Transit Advisory Committee that we refer to as ATAC. We also have with us Sylvia Castillo, who's the manager of Paratransit Operations. Many of you who are on this call are VIA Trans users, and you may have spoken with um, Sylvia or somebody on her team. Um, in, in the near in the past uh, occurrences. We also have with us Martha Flores, who is the manager of ADA and accessibility. And we're pleased to have with us Miguel Castro, who is a community member of ATAC. Thank you all for being with us today. And so we'll get started with <coughs> Ms. Uh, Trustee Como. We'd like to begin with you. Please share with us a few of your comments. Very good. Well, I am so thrilled to be here today. Uh, Via Trans provides such a tremendous service to our community. Uh, two and a half years ago today, I had a spinal cord injury from a fall. I never anticipated riding Via Trans, but my experience <coughs> riding Via Trans has given me a totally different perspective on the service that Via provides. Uh, I am both the oldest and the longest serving uh, member currently of the Via Board of Trustees and I chair the Accessible Transit Advisory Committee, or ATAC. Uh, ATAC's a body of community liaisons working alongside VIA trustees to assist VIA in enhancing the accessibility of VIA services, programs, and facilities. <clears throat> Our goal is to put more opportunities within reach for people with disabilities. Access to mobility through safe, reliable, and affordable public transit options is the key to uplifting our community. One of our ATAC liaison, liaisons is on this panel this afternoon, Miguel Castro, who also chairs the Board of Sales, the San Antonio Independent Living Services. He represents his constituency very well. We have liaisons who are visually or audibly impaired, and they advocate so we can see or hear their needs and concerns. We have liaisons representing the elderly, the autistic and the cognitively challenged. It is a diverse group serving San Antonio's in a very profound way, and I thank them for their extraordinary service to VIA. 
ViaTrans provides an important service for customers who cannot access Via's mainline bus service. We connect people to medical, social, and essential services and appointments, to grocery stores and pharmacies, and to family and friends. Before COVID reduced transit ridership throughout the country, including <coughs> at Via, Via Trans provided over 1 million trips each year. Demand is returning. And in this last fiscal year, we transported 819,723 riders with a weekday average in excess of 2,700 riders. VIA continues to, op to provide thousands of safe, reliable trip options for our clients every day. This fall, VIA opened the new VIA Trans Operations Center and Maintenance Facility, known as VTOC. The new facility hosts our VIA Trans fleet and is closer to the medical center where a majority of VIA Trans riders travel on weekdays. The facility has on-site fueling, washing, and vehicle maintenance bays, which help VIA Trans efficiency and ability to provide better service to our VIA Trans clients. This afternoon, we will be discussing some important updates and helpful reminders for clients and caregivers <coughs> about using VIA Trans services. We will be sharing details about new programs and options designed to improve service and customer experience. You'll learn about this and much more from our expert VIA Trans team members. So thank you for joining us and get your questions ready. Thank you, Trustee Como. So you've now set the stage for what's going to be an interesting <clears throat> panel discussion on some very important programs that we offer to our VIA Trans community. So we're going to get started, but before we do that, I'd like to remind you to remember to dial star three to enter the queue to ask your questions live on call. So we will turn things over to Sylvia and she'll be starting off by giving us information on the VIA Trans Online Services <coughs> System. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad to be here. I'm gonna be talking about VIA Trans Online Services, giving you some updates on it. I'm not sure if everybody's using a VOS, what we call VOS, but uh, just to give you a background on it, it's a web-based application that, next slide please, I'm sorry. <coughs> Thank you. It's a web-based application that uses a secure website for ViaTrans customers to manage their ViaTrans reservations online. VOS is available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Reservations can be made seven days a week between 7 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. from one to four days in advance. Cancellations can be made in VOS anytime and to access VOS, customers can use a personal computer, smartphone, or tablet to log in at viainfo.net backslash VOS. Next slide, please. Some of the benefits of using VOS is that writers can reserve a new trip, view all their trips on a calendar, showing it shows existing and canceled trips. You can cancel via trans trip. You can save favorite trips uh, so it's easier to book that trip next time you go into VOS. And get announcements from VIA there. Track within an hour of the negotiated pickup time when the vehicle will arrive. However, this excludes uh, taxi vehicles because they do not have the equipment on board their vehicles for us to track them. So if you don't see a vehicle in VOS, that means it's probably a taxi. Next slide, please. <coughs> So planning your VIA Trans trip, be aware of opening and closing times at your destination to avoid waiting outside the building before or after business hours. Allow extra time for the pickup and drop off of other riders before reaching <coughs> your destination. Because VIA Trans service is a shared ride service, cancellations by other riders and will call trips made on the day of service could change the travel time to your destination. Allow time for unforeseen events such as traffic conditions and weather delays. Next slide, please. So using via trans, um, excuse me, using vehicle tracking in VOS, be aware that sometimes computer systems, internet, and cell phone lag time may affect the accuracy of the arrival time shown in VOS. <coughs> It's always a good idea to wait at the curb 10 minutes before your scheduled pickup time to meet the Viatrans vehicle. If you have assisted door service, 
wait outside the front door 10 minutes before your scheduled pickup time to meet the Viatrans vehicle. Next slide, please. So coming soon to Voss, we're gonna have reservations by drop-off time. Sylvia, you're mentioning the reservations by drop-off time. Can you talk a little bit about what does that drop, what what does drop off time mean? Is it the time that the customer wants to get dropped off or is it the time that we tell the customer we're going to be getting ready to drop them off? So customers have appointments that they have to go to. Mm -hmm. So they'll, if they have a 10 o'clock appointment, they will tell us, well, I need to be there by 10 o'clock. So then what we'll do is um, we'll schedule the trip so that they can make it to their destination uh, by, by the time they want it. So it's an arrival time to reach the, the, drive, the rider's destination. Um, we're doing a mo Voss modification right now, and it's currently being upgraded to include <coughs> reservations by drop-off time. If you go in there right now, it's not gonna be there. The update will be completed by Monday, November 21st. So once Voss is updated, you should see at the pick, up, pick me up uh, field, um, a drop me off field as well so that you can put in the time that you want to be dropped off at and you then you book your trip like you normally do in boss sylvia if i could interrupt for just sure. a second we do have a caller online who does have a question about this very okay. issue don you're on the line would you like to state your question yes um hi sylvia sean mcdiarmid um hi. i'm calling how are you doing I'm, I'm calling, good, are you? Um, I'm, I'm blessed. I, this is my question. It's actually okay. a twofold question. Um, now, according to the, I, I make most of my trips, I drop off time, and I work out in the community, and I have to be at work most days by uh, 9.30 in the morning. And what I notice is, as of late, and I know it's because the is short of drivers um, and, and staffing issues right now. So uh, when I make my reservation, I typically, let, I, if I've got to be there by 9.30, I tell them by 9.30. And I notice the window keeps getting earlier and earlier. For example, I told them that I had to be there by 9.30 the other day. Um, to work and they wanted to pick me up at like 6:45, and I could not I can't do that because my staff doesn't even get to my residence until uh, 6:30. so um, I I know that I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel where that's concerned but as a consumer that is an issue um, and I know that it's probably being worked on, and I'd like for you to address that. The other issue that I'm that I'm speaking of right now, for example, I'm on the van right now. I'm on an MD van, and I got picked up a little before three, and I'm still on the van. And I know the window a um, hundred years ago. I've been writing a long time. Um, it used to be about an hour and a half was the length that we could be on the van. <clears throat> has that has that window since widened widened a bit? Has it changed? Those are my two questions. I appreciate your time. Sure. Um, let me research your trips because I'm thinking, I'm not sure how many miles you travel to go to work from your home. But I, I do know, I was going to bring that up too, um, that if you're traveling 15 to 25 miles, um, that will take up to one and a half to two hours to get to your destination. Viatrans service is complimentary to fixed route service, so the trip can last as long as riding on a bus, a fixed route bus. But I would like to look at your trip, Sean, and see you know what can be done and, and get back to you on that, if that's okay. Thank you. All right, so you want to continue? Sure. I know we've got a few more slides. Well, I just uh, wanted to make uh, give some suggestions, uh, like allow 10 to 15 minutes before your actual appointment time when booking a trip by drop-off time. And the time of day you travel will determine the length of time it takes to travel to your destination. 
So if you're going during you know rush hour traffic time, that will add more time to your uh, trip. And then for those riders traveling 15 to 20 miles, like I mentioned earlier, especially early in the morning, estimate at least one and a half to two hours to be dropped off. Because uh, via trans service starts at 4 a.m. And so if you need to be somewhere by 5 a.m., you're not going to make it because if the trip takes one and a half hours, you'll get there by 5.30. So, you know, let us know and we'll try to work something out. And then when scheduling a trip for a specific drop-off time, be sure to allow plenty of time to finish your appointment to meet the vehicle at your scheduled pickup time. So if you're going to be somewhere, you're going to be dropped off at 10, don't schedule a pickup at 11 because that will run, it could run into, um, you know, your next vehicle picking you up because I've seen that occasionally. Okay, and thank you. Great, thank you, <coughs> Sylvia, for that information. And thank you, Sean, for giving us a call. I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions, you can press star three on your keypad at any time and you will be placed in the line to speak with a member of our staff. The next time you hear your name, that means you are live on the call and you can ask your question. So while we're waiting for our callers to call in, I'd like to uh, talk to Miguel for just a little bit. Uh, you are a Via Trans user. Have you ever used any of our services similar to what Sylvia mentioned, the um, online reservation, and how did that work for you? Yes, I've used, I use Voss. Frequently, um, I use it to pack the van. Um, basically, every time I use uh, the service, and I also um, occasionally I will make my reservations on on the ball system, mm -hmm. um, and it is a very useful service. And you know, it's you know, I do it to help reduce the call volume. Mm -hmm. I know that is something else that is a problem. Mm -hmm. So um, it helps reduce the call volume for the reservation agents and it makes it a lot easier for, you know, individuals that are able to utilize that service. Mm -hmm. Great, and I think Sylvia, one of the questions or concerns some of our customers who've not tried the service may have is, once they make the trip, do they have to call back to reconfirm that they do have their trip? How do you communicate with them? Is it through an email that they get once they uh, register online or how, how does that work? Well, the customer can look in Voss to see if their trip is on the calendar. That's mm -hmm. how they can confirm the trip is there. Mm -hmm. So, and they can also click on the, um, I guess it's not the link, but the time that they're, they're made the reservation mm -hmm. and it'll bring it up and it'll show them uh, the time, you know, the pickup window and all that. And so once they make it, it's locked in. Correct. Great. And they have to cancel it if they don't need it anymore. Great. So we'll, hopefully we'll have some of our Via Trans users who are listening right now take, take advantage of that and try to use it. Uh, thank you so much, Miguel, for your uh, comments. Yeah. We appreciate that. So we'd like to remind you that we want to hear from you. Dial uh, star three on your telephone keypad to enter the queue to ask the question. And I believe that we have a uh, question, a live caller, Raymond. You've got a, a couple of questions for us that look like it's related to fare. So please uh, ask a question. Uh, yes, this is uh, Raymond. The reason I'm calling it's relevant to the go-kart. Um, like uh, every month, I always go down to make a payment on the go kart. Uh, but like I'm disabled and I'm a senior citizen, I was just curious. Uh, at one point down the line, would, maybe, would it be possible to use the name of the go kart by phone? Use my card, uh, my credit card. We're sorry, you. Uh, you unfortunately, you were breaking up a little bit. You were asking about the go kart, and you were asking something about making payment by phone. I think that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason being is because like, I'm disabled. Uh, I do go the, I do go down to the office monthly to, uh, to pay down to pay on my go kart. Mm -hmm. But I was just curious down the line would it be possible to be uh, using uh, my credit card to pay through the phone on the go kart instead of having to go down there? Being disabled, um, it would make it so much easier. Certainly, I, I, that that does make a lot of sense, and we can certainly see why you're asking. And so we can work with you on that if you would give us a call. We've got your name and a way to contact you, and so I'll have somebody reach out to you to walk you through those steps. Also, if your card is registered, then you can download the fare yourself through your computer with the account that you have made. 
But if that is a problem for you, we'll reach out to you and we'll uh, talk to you about that and how we can work with you on that so that we can make it a little more convenient for you to load your card. Uh, we've got now the, our first poll question that we would like to ask you and we encourage you to respond to us. The question is this, do you make your reservation based on pickup time or drop off time? And Sylvia just talked to us a little bit about drop off time and what that means. So we'd like to know how you're making your reservation. Press one if you make the reservation based on your pickup time. Based two, if you make your uh, reservation based on expected time, or three, if it's based on the different factors that come into how you determine when you want us to pick you up. So if you'll um, log in and give us your responses and we will uh, read the responses out shortly. Thank you for that. So we're gonna move on back to you, Sylvia, with your next presentation where you're gonna be talking to us about via trans subscription service. Yes. Thank you, Priscilla. So um, subscription service is made for reservations that are repeated. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, <laughs> we're going. So subscription service, again, is a reservation that is repeated the same <clears throat> times and days of the week to and from the same location. The trip is consistently taken a minimum of two to three times a week, Monday through Friday, the trips to a Dallas Center, Adult Daycare Center, or employment are examples of trips that qualify for subscription service. Next slide, please. So trip qualifications for subscription service are that the trip or trips for subscription service must meet a two-week qualifying period, which means you have to take the trip for two weeks, either before you call us or when you call us for subscription service, then you have to start taking the trip then so that it can be analyzed. If it is a new trip, of course, the trip will need to be scheduled two weeks before becoming eligible for subscription service. Any changes to a subscription trip, the frequency, time, day, etc., during this two week period may result in delaying the subscription service process. Next slide, please. <coughs> So this is how um, a, sub a scheduler will go through in processing a subscription request. They will look at your trip, they'll research which vehicles travel the same path during the same time that you want the, the trip. Then they assign a seat or wheelchair position on a particular vehicle in the system for the rider's trip. And then they will notify the rider when the subscription service begins. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Some of the features of subscription service um, that you can um, have are that they can go to multiple locations, but they must be at the same time, day, and location using the same mobility device. For example, one-way subscription trips can be made uh, in, with us. It, it doesn't have to be a round trip. Subscription trips cannot be made by appointment time or drop-off time, but you can inform the scheduler the time you need to arrive, and then they'll work with you on that. The mobility of a rider cannot change while on subscription service. The reason is that if you're ambulatory and then you come in a wheelchair, we have not reserved a seat for you in the wheelchair slot. You are on a seat. so. Um, that makes it difficult uh, for the driver when they arrive to pick you up and they see that you're in a wheelchair and they don't have a wheelchair slot available. So that's why uh, we have to redo a subscription if somebody changes their mobility <clears throat> device. Uh, for weekend subscription options, call our scheduling department at 210-362-5120 to discuss this. Subscription trips are not direct trips to locations. They are still shared ride service. So some of the guidelines for subscription service is that the rider is placed on a specific seat on a specific vehicle that best meets the rider's request. <clears throat> Cancellations of more than 50% of subscription trips in a month may result in subscription service being revoked. The reason is that 
we have you have a seat reserved on a van. If you cancel, then we can't fill it with somebody else that wants to ride at that time. And then riders who go on vacation or are hospitalized can suspend their subscription reservations for up to 30 days to hold their subscription service. If a rider's request cannot be made, met within 30 days of a request, the request expires and the customer must reapply for subscription service. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So subscription serving service during holidays are normally canceled. This is because the facilities are closed and uh, you don't have to make your um, subscription, cancel your subscription service. And the holidays that we normally cancel people's subscription is on Independence Day, which is July 4th, <coughs> the first Monday in September, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, and then New Year's Day. For all other holidays, contact the agency you travel to for information on closures. Next slide, please. I wanted to make you aware that there's some uh, different factors that affect via trans service. Things that you normally don't see. Uh, school zones, because we have to travel at a slower speed than is programmed in our uh, system. <coughs> traffic congestion is not programmed as well. Uh, traffic accidents, weather, incidents on the vehicle, such as you know somebody um, falling down or having a, an issue on the vehicle mechanical failure, and delay in service by other riders. That's all I have. Thank you. Sylvia, I've got a question. Can a customer have two subscriptions where they maybe, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they work, and they've got a work subscription, and then <coughs> Tuesday, Thursdays, they do volunteer work somewhere, yes. and then they want to, they have another location they're going to. That's not a, that is an Most issue. Most definitely, they can do that. We have, in fact, we have a, a writer that goes, has subscription service going to multiple locations in one day. Wow. They can do that, yes. Wow, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. So if customers have questions about the subscription service and would really like to talk to, to somebody to walk them through that, mm -hmm. Uh, who can they call or where would they call? They can call our scheduling department at 210-362-5120. Uh, That's the direct number to scheduling. Okay, great. And also I'll remind our viewers and listeners that if there's any information that we're discussing and you would like to get more information or you didn't catch the phone number, you can always call <clears throat> our, our main information number at 210-362-2020 while a lot of people call it for bus information, our agents can help uh, navigate you through the agency and get you where you need to go. So we do have the um, we do have our poll results from the first poll question, and the results are as follows: thirty-two percent say that they make their reservations based on pickup time, forty-five percent say that they make their reservations based on drop-off time, and twenty-three uh, say that it's their reservations are made based on different <clears throat> factors that impact their travel. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we do have a question that has come in through Facebook. And the question is from one of our listeners or viewers named Roy. And he is asking, are there any plans to improve, to improve drop off times for people who take via trans to work? Sylvia will ask you to, to address Sorry. that. Um, it, it depends on the circumstances for for each individual rider. So I think you need to call, you can call our scheduling department and they would be glad to talk to you about how the, the trips are made by drop-off so that you can understand um, that it's based on distance and the number of people riding and give you the, the information that you need for your particular service. Great, thank you so much. <clears throat> We'd like to remind our participants today that we are, we still want you to call in and ask your questions. If you have a question, you can press star three on your phone keypad at any time and you will be placed in line to speak with a member of our staff. We will answer as many questions as we can during the live event if you're participating online. You can submit your questions on the streaming player and if you're watching on Facebook, you can share your question with us on the comment feed. Thank you everybody so much for being with us. And so now we'd like to turn things over to Martha to talk to us about Netherlands. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, like Trustee Como mentioned earlier, 
Um, VIA is committed to enhancing the accessibility of our services and programs in order to maximize independence and opportunities for older adults and people with disabilities. So as part of this commitment, VIA will be contracting with Navilands Code Technology to help make our bus stops and our bus information like more accessible for all of our customers, but especially for our customers who are blind or have low vision. Okay, so what I'll be discussing today is really um, what Navilens is, um, features and benefits of using Navilens, and system implementation. So basically, um, Navilens is a navigation and information solution that will enable blind and low vision via customers access our transit system more independently with the use of their smartphone, two free Navilens phone apps, and a Navilens multicolored QR style code. So let's talk about the code first. The code is enclosed within two one inch wide squared frames. The outer frame is white and the inner frame is black. Within the black frame is the code made up of small cubes of different colors. It's you know, made up of bright pink, black, blue, yellow, all high contrast colors that are uniquely configured in pa different patterns, and each one has these small colored cubes in the different patterns. So how do the codes work? The codes have technology embedded in them that allow for storage of information and also navigation and guidance which directions to the actual code. So in order to obtain the information in the codes or to be guided to them, we must use the Navilens apps, which can be downloaded for free onto any smartphone. And there are two apps. First, there is the Navilens app, and this app will provide directions to the code out loud in an audio format, and then read the message stored. So in our case, it will guide our VIA customers to our bus stops as the bus as I'm sorry, um, as the codes will be placed on our bus stop poles next to our bus stop signs and then provide real time bus information. So whenever that next bus is coming, it will provide you that information. And the app is very helpful for our customers who are blind or have low vision because it has that audio component and navigation to it. The second app is the Navilens, Navilens Go app, and that one provides the message in text format and um, provides a text format and information that is stored within the code. So all messages are provided um, within the app are going to be part of bus stop information. The difference between the apps is that Navilens app will provide the audio message and guidance plus information to the code and the Navilens Go app will provide a text message of information stored in the code. The user only has to activate the app and place the phone chest level high with the camera lenses facing out and the app will begin to work. If a user is within 50 feet of a bus stop with a code, the app will capture the code within a second and begin to provide the audio message guiding them to the stop. The app will provide the user the distance from the code. So for example, if you are 50, I'm sorry, 20 minutes, 20 feet away from the code, it'll tell you you are 20 minutes away, 20 feet away from the code, and then it will give you directions on how to get there. So if you veer off from the code, it will put you back in course and tell you, you know, move to the right, move to the left, or the code is behind you and guide you back to that code. Once you arrive, arrive at the stop, you will receive a verbal notification stating you have arrived and then provide you that bus stop information. So that next bus arrival. Next slide, please. A very helpful feature that these Navilens apps have is that it provides the audio and text messages in 33 different languages. The app utilizes the user's preferred phone language setting to deliver the message. So for me, my phone language setting is in English. And so if I scan a code, I will receive the message, either a text or audio message, in English. My mother's phone is set to, uh, to Spanish, so she, if she scans a code, it, the message will be in Spanish. And this is a great feature for our customers who have limited English proficiency and prefer to speak and receive messages in another language aside from English. And also, this is a great feature for our tourists. We are known as a tourist destination, so anyone using our transit system from an, 
another non-English speaking country, we'll be able to navigate our system very easily. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, our goal is in installing the codes is really to make our bus stops more accessible and more inclusive. So last year we had an incident where we had a customer who was blind sitting at our bus stop and he waited for a while and um, until someone, a passerby came by and said, sir, you know, this bus stop is closed. And um, the passerby knew that the bus stop was closed because there was a sign that was there that said it was closed. But unfortunately, that sign was not accessible for this customer. We also had other measures to help in situations like this, but unfortunately, we were not able to help this customer at this precise moment. So our goal with Navilens is to provide better service for all of our customers and keep situations like this from happening. So if we post a closure sign at a bus stop with a Navilens code, the same physical sign that was inaccessible before will now be accessible for our blind and low vision customers. Next slide, please. So last year, exactly a year ago, November 2021, VIA began a pilot program testing Navilens technology. Um, we made sure to promote it um, through our website, through our Twitter account, partnered with agencies that um, support older adults and people with disabilities. And what we did is we installed 100 codes throughout routes and bus stops um, with high ridership and also near the lighthouse for the blind as they were our partners with this pilot program. Um, we also scheduled testing events that where we invited the public to attend and experience use of the codes of this, you know, this great technology. And the feedback that we received was very, very positive. And Navalance as a whole has received just great feedback. Next slide, please. And I just wanted to share a bit of uh, feedback that we have received and that Navalence has received. Our first, the first one was, um, people say, it feels like someone is guiding you. This is amazing. Next one is, my phone will be my eyes. It's a dream for anyone who is visually impaired. And also another testimonial is, uh, it really feels like magic when you read a label several feet away. And until now there was no alternative but to memorize the routes to follow. And these are just great testimonials, and we know that incorporating Navalens into our bus stops will only make our service better. Next slide, please. So VIA will be moving forward and installing the codes at all of our bus stops. Um, VIA was able to receive congressional funding for a system-wide implementation thanks to Congressman Castro. The project should start early in 2023 and will be completed by the end of the year. As the codes are being installed, VIA will be conducting outreach with agencies that support older adults and people with disabilities to educate our customers on how to use the app. Also, VIA has information posted on our website describing how to use the app. And also, we provide all the 100 codes where we currently have codes. So it, if anyone wants to go out there and test them, they can actually go out there and test a live code. Um, the next slide, please. And just one last thing that I want to share. So for people without disabilities, technology makes things easier. And for people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. And so Navilens will be able to do both for our customers to make things easier and possible and um, help our community members um, utilize our service. Great. This is a very, very exciting program. And, and Miguel, have you or any of your members had an opportunity to experience Navalens? Yes, I've um, used it and other people that I know um, that utilize the service have also used it. And I've heard positive feedback from it, so. Well, the 100 uh, test uh, stops, most of them are on my routes that I use all the time. Mm -hmm. So I found it just to be amazing. And people see me aiming this at the at the sign and they say, what are you doing? And I showed them, I said, the bus is gonna be here in two minutes. They said, how do you know that? And I said, this is coming. And it's only in a hundred stops right now, but by the end of next year, it'll be at like 6,000, 7,000 stops. And what a boon for the tourist industry. Mm -hmm. Are people who come to San Antonio using a very a variety of uh, 
of languages on their phones. They're going to be able to look at this thing, and they're going to be amazed. And we are the first in the country, yes. I think, that are going system-wide. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very proud mm -hmm. of the VIA board for taking this a very, very revolutionary step. Great. Thank you. We're so looking forward to that. I do <clears throat> have a question for Martha, but I'd like to get our second poll question up while we still have some time to do that. So our second poll question is this. Are you currently using Viatrans online services for managing your reservations? Press one if the answer is yes. Press two if the answer is no to the question, are you currently using <coughs> Viatrans online services for managing your reservations? We look forward to getting your answers to that, but I wanted to ask you, Martha, can you talk a little bit about what we're doing at our ticket windows now for persons who are deaf as well as those who have uh, language barriers with the new service that we're providing uh, Genie. Oh yes, so we have uh, contracted with Genie, which is a mobile app that allows for us to provide either sign language interpretation or any other foreign language interpretation at our um, transit centers and you know also with with us when we interact with any via trans app, uh, applicants. So yes, it is a great service and all we have to do is, you know, we, we carry our um, laptop mm -hmm. and we log on to the app and then a live person appears and starts providing that translation. It's mm -hmm. very easy to use. And, you know, we have quick connection within a minute. We mm -hmm. are able to connect with someone either who will be providing sign language interpretation or any foreign language interpretation. Right, it's the, I think there's like over a hundred languages or mm -hmm. so available through that service that we offer. So for our customers who go to the ticket windows who have felt there was a barrier in the past to being able to communicate with us, they won't have that any longer because we've got this new service in place and it's been really exciting for us. Um, so we've got a caller, Janice, who's got a question about our Viatrans service. So Janice, what is your question? Uh, my name is Janice Franklin. Good evening. Um, this is like my fourth time using VIA, and I was going to call today for a reservation tomorrow for a prosthetic where they're sending me. The street is Rough Rider, which is right behind Walsham. And then I remembered my son, who uses your uh, service all the time, says that you don't use you don't go anywhere on Walgreens. So my question was, how do I know where do you go and where do you not go? So when you make your reservation, Janice, you can you give the reservation agent your address and she can tell you right then and there whether or not Viatrans goes there or not. But remember, um, Viatrans goes to all areas within uh, 410, loop 410, except for certain areas like Hollywood Park, we don't go there because they, they're not part of the VIA system. But uh, if it is within 410, we can take you there. But the reservation agent will tell you whether or not uh, we go to that destination. Thank you for, thank you for, that, for that question. We do have the results from our uh, poll question and the question was are you currently using via trans online services to make your reservations and 32 of you say yes that you are 68 say no that you are not and so we're hopeful that by because of this conversation today that maybe some of you have not been using the uh, <clears throat> online services will uh, will give it a shot and try to use it I think you'll see that there is uh, it's very convenient and it makes it easy for you to get your trip scheduled without having to call in. Um, I'd like, Sylvia, maybe you could spend just a couple of minutes talking about the new uh, Via Trans Operation Center that uh, Trustee Como mentioned in our uh, opening uh, remarks. Well, um, we are up and running. We have almost everybody at the facility except for dispatch. Uh, we're working out the te technical difficulties with that. But it's, it's working out wonderful. The operators love it there. They're close to the medical center, so we can tr get there faster to pick up people to take them home. So it's just a, a great uh, a location where we're at. Plus, we have two freeways that are right next to us, 410 and I-10, so it's easier. 
it, it, for us to get on a freeway, for the operators to get on a freeway and go pick up people. So we're kind of centralized now, so we love it. It's great. It's a beautiful facility, uh, lots of space, right. and we're able to do everything under one roof, so it makes it a lot more efficient for us to get our via trans uh, service out. We do have another live caller before we get to Judy on her question regarding shared rides. We'd like to tell our callers that if you're in the queue and we don't get to you, that uh, we will follow up with you directly if you leave your information with the operator. So we, we encourage you to do that. If we don't get to you, then we will get back. We will get back to you. We do have a, a third poll question that we'd like to ask before we close out this hour. And the question is this, after learning about subscription service, is this a via trans service that you plan on using in the future? Uh, press one if the answer is yes, press two if the answer is no, and press three <clears throat> if your answer is maybe. And hopefully through today's presentation, uh, we've persuaded you uh, to take advantage of that feature that we offer to our via trans customers. So, uh, Judy, you're on the line. Uh, please state your question. Good evening. My name is Judy Brady. I have been a long time via writer. I am very concerned about your new policies that we were not notified about. Um, I am concerned that you're not considering the danger endangerment issues that are being created. Um, shouldn't VIA have notified us by mail or email that handicapped riders uh, are now, you're now calling this a share ride and not a handicap service? Um, we can now be on the van longer than two hours and your dispatchers have uh, discretion to cancel our rides so you do not have to get us to our doctor's appointments on time and you will not call the doctors and explain this is creating anywhere from 50 to 200 dollars no-show fees for us that needs to change because you didn't tell us that you no longer have to get us there on time um, we're calling in two hours in advance to give y'all two hours and still not getting to our appointments. Military appointments, I have to wait six more months to get another appointment. Um, and you need to let us know that your dispatchers, according to your customer service, have sole transgression of whether or not to cancel a trip. And we're on the van, I was on the van three hours and nobody called, nobody said anything, and I had, I didn't know whether to try to get home or stay there at Bamsey. I'm really upset about y'all not telling us of these policy changes and how rude your customer service is. It, she was very ugly. So that's, those are just suggestions that you need to be letting us know. Thank you. We'll look into it, uh, Judy, and we appreciate your comments. Um, but yeah, we're d dispatchers cannot cancel somebody's trip without their permission, without them requesting it. So I would like to look into your uh, your concerns so that we can address it. Now, sometimes you know there have been issues out on the road where um, our drivers have made mistakes where they perform somebody's trip, and so it drops off the screen and they didn't do it correctly, the person is still on the van, we apologize for that. Um, I think that happened once, um, but we haven't changed our policies regarding shared rides. So I'm not quite sure uh, where you're, you're coming from, but I'd like to talk to you and call you. So I think they, we have your number and we'll get a hold of you. And let me say this, Judy, as a member of the board, I, I appreciate your call and the information and we certainly will look into this. I know the people at this table and the people on their staffs work, you know, 40 hours a week trying to improve the services. Over the last several years, we've all been uh, challenged because of the COVID, because of having to modify uh, the uh, ability to get people where they need to go, and also because of a, a shortage of, uh, of operators. We're working to fix all these things. Uh, I can say that we did a recent survey and it showed that that 94% of the riders were very, very pleased with VIA services. Mm -hmm. And that is far in excess of what the national average is. Uh, but we're not happy till we're 100%. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna continue trying to improve this 
and I'm sure that you will have follow-up uh, in the next day or so. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yes, we do. Uh, we do want to hear from our customers. We want to know how they feel about our services. And so we do periodically do satisfaction surveys to see how we're doing. And so if you do get contacted from somebody representing VIA asking you about uh, your um, how you feel about the service and how what it's doing for you and how it's helping you, please let us know so that we can make changes and improvements as needed. I'd like to remind you we're coming to the end of our program, so if you do have a question and we can get one squeezed in, please uh, make sure to, to call in now, and you can do that, of course, by pressing star three um, on your telephone keypad. So we do have the results. Uh, the question was, after learning about subscription service, is this a service you plan on using in the future? 42% uh, said yes, 28% said no, and 30% said maybe so hopefully we've changed your mind a little bit and the people who are 30 in the 30 percentile of saying maybe maybe you'll uh give us a call and try try the subscription service out so we did have a question um that's come to us online and it is uh going to be popping up here in a second need to be there need to be their scheduling function not on the online system not yet yeah, drop off mm -hmm. they're talking about drop off they're talking about drop off yeah that, that is coming november 21st and so what uh what will what will how will they see that come through on the system how will they know that it's there for them to take advantage of it will be in the selection okay. when they want to be either picked up or dropped off Okay, so, yeah. so just keep an eye out for it the next time uh, you're scheduling your trip after, what did you say, November 21st? 21st? Right. Great. And we'll put an announcement on in Boss as well. Great. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for that, Sylvia. So we have li a live caller on the line, Norma. You've got a question for us? Yes. You're on live. Oh, my question is, um, if I put money on my Via Trans card, is that would that money be used just for the via trans and via link cannot pull out for it? Uh, via link service is free for paratransit uh, customers, our, our via trans customers, so you shouldn't have to pay for service on via link. You show them your ID, oh. your via trans ID. Uh, uh -huh. okay. okay, so you don't have to pay on via link or you shouldn't okay. be paying right because of via link service well, the, what we allow okay. for our... go ahead i'm asking that question because um i paid a few times if you've paid on via link if that has happened where they've collected fare from you please give us a call at 362-2020 Give us that information so we can look into it because the via link for the for a via trans user the via link fare uh, mirrors what you would pay if you were riding the bus service and so you should not be you should not have paid that fare so if that did happen please give us a call at 210-362-2020 and we will look into that uh for you and uh but you shouldn't have to pay on via link and be sure and show your id yes via trans id so they know that you're via trans customer yes uh so thank you for that question and bringing that to our attention we do have a facebook live question why can't via drivers use gps like subcontractors do um they do have gps it's on the mdt the mobile data terminal in the vehicle um, it's not as specific as the GPS, but it is. it gives them directions, turn by turn directions. So they, they do have GPS. And what this GPS does, it, it brings up the customer's trip and it pulls that information for the address and then it tells the operator uh, where to go. This also eliminates any errors and putting north instead of south on certain streets so um, they do have gps but thanks for the question yes thank you and again i will emphasize if you 
uh, come across a situation like that and you have a concern, please feel free to reach out to us. We don't want you to feel that you have to wait till we have these type of uh, meetings to do that. You can give us a call at 210-362-2020. We do take those calls seriously as they come in and we do research them with the appropriate departments. So before we close, we do have one uh, last call that we're gonna take from our customers. This one is uh, from Tessa and she's got a question about subscription service. Tessa, please state your question. Hi, this is Tessa Perry. My son um, rides the uh, via uh, trans bus, but um, I heard you mention something about a uh, subscription, but I don't know if I missed it. I don't know what that is. Can you explain what that is? Um, yes, it's a, it's a service um, where you can schedule it and you don't have to make the reservation uh, every time. You just schedule it with our scheduling department. They set it up. So like, for example, if he goes to school Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 o'clock, he needs to be there by 10 and then we'll try to, we'll schedule it so that he'll, he gets picked up at the time appropriate so that he can get there to school on time. So if you will call our um, scheduling department, 362-5120, they can help you set that up if you'd like or explain it more in detail. Uh, regarding your situation for your son. Thank you, Tessa. We hope that we answered your question, but please give us a call and we'll look into that further. So we've come to the end of our hour. And so we want to just take a moment to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time to be part of this very important conversation. We hope that you've got some information that you can take with you to uh, help you as you uh, use Via Trans to go on your journey and take your trips. For those of you who could not get a question into, into us live, if you've left your information and your question, we will be responding to you. Uh, some of you may not have been able to get in. If not, you can email your question to us. The email address is cust.serv at viainfo.net. Or you can call our office at 210-517-4715. Um, the person on the line will take your information, information and get it to us. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We plan to have more of these in the future so we can keep you informed of what's going on with our via trans service as well as other services that we offer to the community. Thank you and have a great afternoon.